Hello, and welcome to another episode of Inside the Shield with Pro Football Moms. I'm your host, Alicia Jarrett. I'm here with my co-host, Mr. Rob Vaca, and today we have an exciting mother on the show. We have Miss Angela Burns, mother of Brian Burns, defensive end for the Carolina, Carolina Panthers. Panther. Yes, yes. Welcome, Angela. Yay. Hello, how are you guys doing? Hello, hello. Good to see you, Angela. <laughs> Good to see you guys. Yes, for sure. Thank you so very much for joining us today. This is going to be an exciting show. This mom right here, Rob, Angela, you had two sons in the league, right? Yes. Brian yes. has a brother that was in the league some, some years ago, right? So we're going to get to hear years. all about that. And mm -hmm. Angela is going to share some really amazing things about Brian with us today. So I we're excited. Wait. I can't wait. I, I, I've been watching Brian for a while. I can't wait to hear about what he's like on the inside scoop. Hey, if you're watching the show today and you're not on Brinks TV, you got to go right now to Brinks.tv. Make sure you log in because we're giving away memorabilia. There's going to be interactive gaming. There's going to be trivia and you're not going to want to miss it. So without further ado, Great to see you, Angela. Take it away, Alicia. Let's get it started. So, Angela, I yes. got the opportunity to, to uh, do a little research on Brian, and I saw where you call him the Black Panther. Tell us why you call Brian the Black Panther. Well, someone asked me, um, how is Stanley, which is my oldest son that played for the Carolina Panthers, and Brian, different and I said Stanley was like an elephant you're gonna hear him coming he's gonna be knocking down trees and tearing up the jungle BJ is like which I call him BJ Brian is like a panther he's smooth debonair he'll creep up on you and you won't see him coming Wow. Well, at six foot five 250 he must be real quiet because he's a big cat that is a big panther. He's real quiet and he's real smooth. And he can be dangerous. <laughs> well, we've all seen that. Look, yeah. what an interesting story, right? So Brian goes to Florida State and he starts at Florida State University as a freshman. And, he's, and he leads the nation in sacks as a kid. He's just out of high school, right? He's just a freshman. Tell us a little bit about what that step was like for Brian from high school to Florida State. What were those few years like for, for Brian and your family? Well, um, me, I, uh, I'm nervous with football altogether. You know, I just think it's a contact sport. And as a mom, I'm just nervous about everything. Um, I'm nervous about other women kids and other mom kids. I'm just one of those nervous moms but uh brian going from um american heritage which is where he went to high school to florida state uh brian was only wearing 218 pounds hmm. so he was thin to win you know he was thin <laughs> so that gave me a lot of concern but it didn't matter he went out there he did his thing he led uh florida state uh the transition was easy seemed to be uh, he didn't miss a beat. He just went right out there and performed and gave it all he had, and it turned out to be great. Mm -hmm. So you know at Florida State that he was really good, but at what point, you know, I don't know if it was at Florida State or before Florida State, um, did you feel like Brian had the potential to play in the league? You know what, be honest, as his mom, didn't really see it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't because I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't look at it like that. Mm -hmm. I just look at Brian playing football and he's good at it. That's it. The, the league really only came into play in my mind when Stanley, like Ma, BJ going to make it to the league. And I was like, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if you get 10 sacks, I don't know if that's great or not as a, <laughs> as a mom. And remember, I'm not really a football fan. I'm a Brian Burns fan. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm a Stanley McClover fan. So mm -hmm. be honest, I'm getting more into football now, 
um, learning the game, learning the positions and of other players and everything like that. But before, I didn't know what it take to be to get to the league. So uh -huh. once Stanley started telling me that he had a lot of potential to actually become an a NFL player, I was like, okay, that's my kid. All right. <laughs> so Angela, you said you didn't really see it coming with Brian and Stanley was telling you Brian's going to make it to the NFL. I think you laid out the whole thing for us. Stanley was the elephant. You were looking for an elephant, and here came this <laughs> panther. You didn't know what hit you. You didn't know what was happening. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly right. Stanley kind of uh, made me realize that he had the actual potential and the gift to actually make it to the NFL, and I started thinking, oh, wow. My son can actually be an NFL player? Okay. Mm -hmm. But in high school and stuff, he played football. That was it. Mm -hmm. So here's mm -hmm. what, what, what makes it really intriguing and even more compelling and interesting, right? You went from, I didn't know my son was going to be an NFL player, to your son's a first-round pick. There's only 32 of those. It's rare air. It's rare to make it to the NFL really hard, like really hard but really rare to be a first round pick. When did that come like to you? When did you realize that was gonna happen? And what, was, what did that mean? Did it mean anything or did it just mean he was going to the NFL? No, it meant a lot because Stanley gonna make you know it mean a lot. <laughs> I mean, he talked about it every day. Mom, this boy, can be, this boy can be one of the best. Mom, this boy can be. So he makes you believe whether you know it or not. Stanley gonna make sure you know that BJ can be a first rounder. And he used to say things like, Mom, if BJ keep his head straight, stay focused, he can be a first round draft pick. To me, that means he just still going to the NFL. I don't know, first round, second round, third <laughs> round, whatever. Um, bro, uh, Stanley went seventh round. So still, as far as I was concerned, Stanley was in the NFL. So <laughs> Stanley was the hype machine. Yeah. Yep. Stanley's still the hype is. guy. Still is. I love yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yep. So is. even with that, there has to be like a moment since he's been playing, since BJ has been playing, um, that was like very, very special for you. What was that moment? That moment was when he got that phone call from the Panthers. And I think God played a trick on us because we, we were hearing the phone that they had at the, uh, at the area uh, at the draft. We would hear that phone and we would know that they, our team was called. Well, they didn't call that phone. They called Brian's phone. Mm -hmm. And we were waiting for the big phone and then Brian's phone vibrated on his leg. So we never heard a phone. And when Brian picked the phone up, that was it. That was the moment right there. I'm like, oh my God, not only is my son uh, uh, number 16th pick first round, but he's going to the team that we prayed about. Wow. And the reason we prayed Carolina because we knew about Carolina based on Stanley. And we always liked Carolina. But what we prayed for for BJ was the perfect fit. It didn't. I didn't care whether he went number one or number 32, 31, whatever it is. I didn't care. As long as God put him with the perfect fit. And we felt like it was Carolina. Wow, very good. How very emotional good. was that moment for you? Did you get caught up in that moment? Were you ready for it? No, <laughs> no. I don't think, I don't think, I don't care how good the player is or, or things that you hear Oh, he's definitely first round. He's this. It don't really hit you until it's what it is. Mm -hmm. And when he got that phone call and he started talking to, I believe it was Marty at the time, when he started talking to the Panthers, it was emotional. I was crying. My mom was crying. We was thanking God. It was like so surreal. Like I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Mm -hmm. Again, to the to the same team as Stanley, mm -hmm. impossible. Mm -hmm. And we were just blown away. Mm -hmm. 
that special. So what has, yeah. this, is, this is really interesting, right? So for the Carolina people out there listening and watching, you prayed that he would go to Carolina. Your first son played in Carolina years before. What's Carolina been like to you and your family? Tell us about the experience in Charlotte and, and at Carolina. Okay, well, the first time in Carolina when we came, it wasn't like this time. The first time, you know, um, I was newly married. Brian, and not newly married, but uh, my kids were young. And so we was back and forth, you know. This time, I moved here. So it's a different experience. And Stanley wasn't really, like, he wasn't as big as Brian is with the football as far as... Um, uh, uh, I guess people knowing him or whatever. And so now people just know Brian everywhere we go. If, if he's with us, they just know him. So it wasn't the same with Stanley. So it was different. Carolina um, has, has changed. I mean, it, it has gotten better looking, meaning <laughs> when Stanley was coming, it was different than what BJ is, where it is now with BJ. Um, we never, I never looked for a home here when Stanley was in the league. Now I have, uh, I've gotten to see more of Carolina and I think it's beautiful. Uh, the people here are extremely nice everywhere I go. And, and it's not, nobody knows me, but they're just nice people. So it's been a great experience from when Stanley went in to now. So that's, uh, that's really cool. Alicia, whose son plays for the Falcons, mm -hmm. obviously we're talking about how great Carolina is, the, one of the Falcons' rivals. But that's really <laughs> cool to know. Charlotte is a beautiful city. Oh, yeah. The, the uh, growth in the last 15 years has been amazing. The downtown yes. area is awesome. The restaurants, yes. the hotels, the shops, the, it's, it's really nice. So yeah. you're, you're now a Carolina resident. Yes, I am. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm actually back and forth between Florida because my mom and my brothers and stuff are still in Florida. Uh, so I live between both. Well, and but I both, love Carolina. Both states huh? that have both states that have some really really good food. I want to talk about food for a minute. <laughs> okay. So my boy, he's a big boy. He loves to eat. He's a great cook and is by his own right. Uh, we have these little cooking competitions. He thinks his lamb chops are better. I think my lamb chops are better. You know, I generally win. <laughs> we do the same mm -hmm, thing with mm -hmm. spaghetti. <laughs> what okay. is it when Brian and Stanley call you? You know, Mama, I want, what's that food that they want you, you to cook? Well, most of all, it's macaroni cheese, baked beans, and fried chicken. Oh. That is Brian's absolute favorite. <laughs> now that he's playing football, he don't get to eat that that much because, you know, I cook it the way I cook it, which is probably not the healthiest way. But, uh, you know, the baked beans are sweet and all this cheese. And so for now, Brian's on another type of diet, so he can't really eat it right now. But when um, the season is over, I'm sure he's going to want it. <laughs> Good. I can definitely eat it. It's not in season for me. <laughs> and that fried chicken sounds good. Now, you know, it's... Oh, yeah. And I'm, and I'm pretty good at it. I'm pretty good at it. Yeah, my stomach is making noises now. <laughs> Listen, uh, Angela, you know, um, it's really important, especially for us moms, that our sons are surrounded by good people. Right. And, um, you know, we went through a process of choosing the team that we wanted to have around my son. What does that process look for you? How, how did that process look for you guys? Um, it was different. It's different. Um, I definitely try to definitely try to um, surround him with positive people, people who I know love him, people who I know got his back. Uh, uh, and usually that family, um, he has, uh, about three or four best friends that he went to high school and college with that in the circle and everybody that's in the circle, um, 
got his best interest at heart. I will say that for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even down to uh, financial advisors, his agent, his insurance broker, everybody whom is in his circle, I believe with wholeheartedly that has his best interest at heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's just really important. And that's one of the questions that I get all the time. You know, how did you choose the team, you know, that's surrounding our sons? And that's from, you know, high school, the transition from high school to college, college to professional. So we always want to definitely talk about that and share information for listeners and watchers um, or Absolutely. our viewers is watching. So thanks mm -hmm. for sharing that information. Um, listen, so Grady and I have a game day ritual every game uh, I've been very fortunate to where I've never missed a game home or away um, and that's been you know peewee junior high high school college and he's been in the league now seven years I've never missed a okay. game home or away the, the one game that um, the pandemic stopped us from going to we did something mm -hmm. to you know make sure that he saw us that day but okay. once we get there in the game uh, we do a fist bump and then I'll give them a word or two, you know, depending on the team that we're playing. Do you and Brian have a game day ritual? If so, if so, please share that with us. Yes, we do. Um, every game day. I mean, this has been going on from college. Uh, I usually go to most of the games uh, because Brian, we have four dogs. Uh huh. So a lot of away games, I have to stay with the dogs. Uh huh. <laughs> uh, um, so matter of fact, this game, uh, Texas game, uh, I won't be there, but I'll be to the next one uh, because of the dogs. Uh, but I'm <laughs> watching. Uh, but our ritual is I always every morning um, I have he prays. Mm -hmm. uh, he prays for both teams. No injuries. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing. Both teams no injuries and he prayed for success for that game and a victory of course but main thing is i always send him a message about keeping his head up stay focused play his game mm -hmm. uh have fun you know this is never stopped i do it every single game uh, uh in the morning of every game that's mm -hmm. our ritual mm -hmm. that's uh, that's amazing and those rituals are so important for our boys like if, if I'm for whatever reason, a tad bit late getting to the spot, I can see him looking, looking, you know, where are you at, where are you at? So yeah, uh, speaking of dogs, we have a special guest today. <laughs> this is our special guest. My God, guest. he's beautiful. And, 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 and I get the having to keep the dogs. I am dog sitting for my son right now. He got two, <laughs> two big cane corsos. This dog is not like Brian. This is not the Black Panther. You know when this dog's coming. Yeah. It's like oh, okay. a hurricane. More like Stanley. It's like a hurricane. So you told us how you pray for health and safety and, and for the guys to, to avoid being injured. Tell us what role faith has played in your journey with your family. Oh, we, we have amazing faith. My mom is the uh, epitome of keeping the faith and praying and Brian has a, his own personal Bible that his financial advisor bought for him for Christmas last year or either the year before. I'm not sure which one, but he prays. He has this thing around his arm says, man of God. Uh, our faith is very, very strong. And because he knows that what he does is a gift. Mm -hmm. And he knows where the gift comes from. It comes from God. And he knows it. So our faith is very, 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 very strong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you just said something that's really important to me. And I know it's important to Alicia. And that's gratitude. Mm -hmm. Sounds like Brian's a guy who just, he lives in gratitude. Where did he get that from? You know what? I'm going to say just family, just his family. He, he's very grateful for everything he says it a lot. Uh, Brian, Brian is quiet. Um, um, he keeps a lot to himself, but when he do expresses himself, he knows. And there, there have been um, uh, pictures of him kneeling, praying before games mm -hmm. um, on the field, because he, this is very important. He makes sure I tell him to pray before, during, 
and after the game. Mm-hmm. You know, God, thank me for thanking him for letting you make it through the game, no injuries. Thank you for all the stamina, the, the, the everything. He's just, he knows that, he knows where his, where his faith is. He knows it. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I'm, I'm, we're very big on it. Mm-hmm. Very big. Love it. Angela, if um, BJ was in a room and you were in a separate room and he was asked a question, you know, give us one sentence to describe your mom. What do you think he'd say? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> She's my everything. Uh, uh, my mom is kind, gentle, loving, humorous, and she's a no-nonsense mama, if you know what that means. <laughs> I do. Moreover, my kids knows what that means. <laughs> oh, yeah. No nonsense, no foolishness. We're not having it. So, yeah, he would say she's my everything. I love it. Very good. Very good. <laughs> I just pictured a sneaker getting thrown at him when he was a little kid because you're no nonsense oh, and you're humorous. It was more than a sneaker. It was more than a sneaker. <laughs> The spoon, the pot, whatever. <laughs> and BJ was a prankster, joker, play all the time. He's totally different now, now than he was as a kid. Wow. So Angela, for our listeners and for the viewers, give us a little secret that BJ might be like, Mama, what'd you tell them that for? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, Brian, he's going to kill me. <laughs> but Brian wanted to be a male dancer. <laughs> wow, this is the this this is the best episode we've ever had. <laughs> and I think I'm going to get killed for that, but he cuz he can dance very well. And at a party, my 50th birthday party, Brian decides to get on the floor and dance. Everybody loved to see him dance. And I think he got a hold to the spike punch. <laughs> Next thing I knew, the shirt's coming off, the jacket's coming off. He's on the floor. Now my friends are throwing money on the floor. Did, wait, did you have a pole in this room? Was he grabbing out of the pole and swinging around? Minutes. <laughs> two minutes. He go, Mama, if I can make this kind of money in two minutes, if football don't work for me, this is what's going to happen. <laughs> so that leads into Rob's next question: Life after football for Brian. <laughs> Brian, listen, Brian has it. We call we call that the encore career. His encore career. Hey. He's got he's got options. He's got options. As long his, as he his, can take um, his shirt off and move, I guess he's good. Because he is a, definitely a great dancer. He danced very well. <laughs> I can't wait but, um, to see. After, after football, I think he wants to uh, he wants to try his hand at acting. Really, mm. he he said he wants to act. Uh, he wants to open up a doll ken a doll kennel. Okay. Uh, he wants to take care of um, injured dogs, dogs that you know place dogs with homes that you know when people get too old they can't take care of them. Rescue because he has a foundation called Route Fifty Three uh, Dog Rescue. Mm. That's what he wants to do. He loves dogs. Where did he develop that passion for rescuing dogs? Um, well, we've always had dogs uh, ever since he was a little boy. So, um, but he can't stand to see a dog being mistreated. Mm-hmm. An animal, period. I don't care if it's a cat, a hamster, whatever. He don't like to see no animal because he feels like they're helpless. And for someone to hurt them, it just bothers him. He won't even watch a video of someone mistreating a dog. He just don't, he just, it, he can't take it. So he wanted, he wanted to be able to um, have a place where you can bring injured dogs or dogs that don't nobody want anymore or, and he can place with good homes or something like that. He likes that. He's going to he, actually do that. He know. sounds like the perfect catch. If there's any ladies watching this right now, he sounds like the perfect catch. This guy is a male dancer. He's an NFL player. He's a first round draft pick. He's funny. He loves animals. I mean, that's like a woman's dream. Oh, he's it? a catch. He's going to be a catch for some, some lucky lady. 
He's We're going to do a show called The Biggest Catch, and he'll be the star of it. That's unbelievable. I don't yeah. know. Brian, Brian, Mama Jarrett sending you my baby girl's number. I can see okay. that. She's not you lying. You do that. You do that. Let's keep it in the family. You know? Keep it in the family. She's not lying. So he has all really? these attributes. I feel like I, I got to go back and redo my life. He's got all these attributes. Let's fast forward and imagine 30, 40 years from now. What is the legacy of Brian Burns? What are people saying about Brian Burns, the person? Well, Brian Burns, the person, um, well, they're definitely going to say he's a, he's a good person. He's a great person. He has a great heart. Uh, he's a giving person. Uh, and also, his, I would like his legacy, I'm sure he would, too, to make it to the Hall of Fame uh, as a football player, uh, as one of the uh, best players to ever play defensive end. Um, mm -hmm. But as him, as a person, they would definitely say, he is a very nice human being. It's a great testament, Mom. Yeah, for if sure. If he can, mm -hmm. if he can make it to the Hall of Fame and be the person that he sounds like he is, that's that's rare air. He's already in rare air. It's even more rare. And and the yeah. key the key is, as you know, reminding him to keep his eye on the prize. I mean, he can do it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, for absolutely. sure. Absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. Angela, thank you so very much for being with us today. Totally, thank you totally for appreciate me. you. Absolutely. We're going to continue praying for Brian and that he has a successful season. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks, Angela. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. So thank much you. fun. Thank you. Bye-bye. Angela Burns.